Stephen Jones will get the 107th meeting between these two teams underway. First met in Dublin 121 years ago. Wales lead the series 60-40. How they would love to make it 61-40. No no Taken in initially by the captain doing the skipper's work, Brian O'Driscoll. And those Stringer waits to fire off the first of those quick fire passes to Humphreys, who switches play into the bright sunshine. This is David Jones, who's playing at number eight for the first time today. The Finetley workhorse, real prospect, and immediately bursting holes and bursting into the Irish half. Gareth Cooper, the scrum half over the 10 metre line, up to Stephen Jones. Here's Cooper again. Bright, energetic start by Wales. Shanklin to Martin Williams. Early challenge for Jordan Murphy. <laughs> Wales lose the line out. Stringer to Shane Byrne, who was standing out. Look at Shane Byrne go. He's finally stopped by Gareth Llewellyn. Here's Humphreys. Little switch inside to Kevin Maggs who is a real pile driver when he gets going. The ball seemed to be knocked forward. But they were playing the advantage. Wales were offside and Ireland will have an early penalty in front of the posts. And it's a straightforward three points for Ireland and David Humphreys. Six and a half minutes gone at the Millennium Stadium. And Ireland lead by three points to nil. Well taken in again by Jones. Driven forward by Robert Sadoli. There's the ball for Cooper, well presented. Lots of men out wide. Mark Taylor got the ball and two Irish shirts. Here's Jones again, trying to weave some magic, taken on by Yestin Thomas, the Clenethley prop. Watkins popping up, they got men over. It really was an important tackle by Justin Bishop on Rhys Williams. Still though, they have the ball, Jones for the line! Touches down! Suggestion from Paddy O'Brien on the far side that it was a double movement. And we are going to the video referee. Joel! And the Frenchman Joel Juche has a decision to make. Stephen Jones Joel, goes line. just brought down by, by Justin Bishop. Jordan Murphy gets Joel. pushed off. Joel, there's a foot on the ball, that's a try in my book. That's got to be, assuming there's no foot in touch at the same time, we'll see from this angle. No, Wales are, Wales are ahead, surely. Nothing wrong with that. If Steve Lander looks up, he will see three letters on the big screen above that tell him that Wales have taken the lead. by seven points to three. Yeah. Oh, Our first shot of the eagle eye, the eye in the sky above the line out, Just giving us Jump for the ball. a brand new perspective on the game of rugby, really. There it is, hovering above the pitch. before lunch yesterday, leads to moments like that, and Wales' four-point lead has been sliced into a one-point lead, and midway through the opening half, Wales lead by seven points to six. And, uh, prepares to throw in his Six Nations debut as a replacement against Wales in that record win in Dublin a year ago. Working really hard to make sure that Ireland don't miss the man who's working with us today, Keith Wood. Oh, 
champion there, trumped by Robert Sadoli. Really was some hit for the first time, though. Maybe the backs can show what they can do. Neat little switch between O'Driscoll and Murphy, who was really coming in at pace. And it was that pace and angle that forced Wales to concede the penalty. Well, that really was a shame as well, because Aaron was just dying to get that one away. Yeah, Jordan Murphy just cutting back against the grain. Breaks the first tackle, but he's not going to get away from that man. Gollan Jarvis wrapped up well and truly in the tackle. They've weathered the Welsh storm. David Humphreys has kicked two penalties since Stephen Jones tried. And as a result, Ireland have restored a two-point lead. Here's Jordan Murphy, a little trick from the Leicester magician, maybe. They really had to be aware, and Gareth Thomas skipping back to avert the danger. Well, that's the vision again and Jordan Murphy. The kick was a gem because he took it on the run, and without breaking his stride, the kick was away. Something David Campisi perfected. Didn't break his stride at all, gets around a really good attacking position. Just on the, just on the Welsh, five yards, five yards out from this Welsh try line line out to Ireland and just look at them they're making sure they get this call absolutely right a minute of normal time to go in the half and you don't need me to tell you that a try here would be big and it's Ireland's throw in taken in by O'Kelly Quinlan on the peel Shane Byrne tried the thrust, now they come down the backs. Humphreys, little neat interchange between the two centres. Bishop does well to initially hang on, but it stalled the move slightly. Island reset. Stringer to O'Driscoll. This is Leo Cullen, the big leggy blonde from Dublin. Stringer, Humphreys, Jordan Murphy for the line, Keith Gleeson for the glory. They were patient, the hands were perfect, and Ireland have scored in first half injury time. Well, I say that class players make time for themselves. Jordan Murphy was the architect of that. David Humphreys put him away, but he had so much time. In reality, he had a microsecond to make his mind up there. The long ball to Jordan Murphy just stops him. So calm, so collected, knows what he needs to do, got in behind the Welsh defence, drew two defenders, popped the ball away to Keith Gleeson, look at that. Three defenders he drew, made it so easy for Keith Gleeson. That's, that's genius again. It's a real struggle in that front row. You're looking for one shot that sums up the first half. That shot will provide it. And it's precisely that act that brings the first half to an end. If you're of Irish persuasion, the last time they did lose here, they were also two wins away from a grand slam. They went on to beat England in Dublin, but ended up losing this one. So there's still work to do. And everyone in green will know that. And so will Wales. If they can stay close to Ireland, continue to pressurise them as the match wears on, maybe, just maybe, one or two doubts might begin to creep into the minds. And I wonder what dear old Maria is making of it all. Maria Ely, guest of the Welsh Rugby Union, 103 years old, played rugby for Cardiff ladies during the First World War, her first visit to the Millennium Stadium, enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the rugby. Cleverly taken line out. Keith Gleeson gathering at the tail. Probably didn't happen much in Maria's day. Here's Humphreys. Looks like a skewed his kick. Taken in by Thomas. No changes at half time, by the way. The kick from Matthew Watkins was charged down. A moment of danger for Wales. Ireland scored just before half time. Here goes Humphreys. And Gleeson again has scored just at the start of the second half. An Irish Aussie double whammy 
and Keith Gleeson is powering Ireland towards the fourth leg of the Grand Slam challenge. Well, a lot he's looked on when that kick was charged down, but it's just the star Wales didn't want. Ireland all over them, and again, Brian O'Driscoll really made the key tackle, they wrapped it up after that, Anthony Foley and Dennis Hickey up on the charge down. But it was Brian O'Driscoll who won the ball, then ball goes out to Alan Quinlan, looks like David Humphreys might have blown it, but he spins around out of that tackle and just pops that to, to Keith Gleeson, who really probably can't believe his luck. How much divides those two men? Completely opposite records at the moment. Eddie O'Sullivan on the right, heading for his 10th straight win. Steve Hansen heading for a 10th defeat. Seen it, gonna play it, thank you, seen it, play it, in 15. Cooper to Jones, Shanklin, got away with the bouncing ball, Matthew Watkins to Reese Williams. Picked up again by Mark Taylor. Try score it in that late flourish at Murrayfield a fortnight ago. They could do with something similar now, just a little quicker though. Here's Jones, Williams. So frustrating. He has the speed, but just isn't being given the space at the moment to operate. And Ireland on the breakaway. Hickey does have the speed. I wonder whether anyone will catch him. David Jones coming across. The referee Steve Lander said there was no obstruction. And for half a second, I thought Hickey might have been away, but I didn't count on the speed of David Jones coming across the cover. Uh, David Jones as well, but Dennis Hickey would probably be a little bit annoyed with himself. He just needed to go for the kick a little bit earlier. He takes the kick, but it, that, that should have been taken a couple of paces earlier because just gives David Jones that kind of little area of doubt where he's coming across the kick and he's blocking. It breaks De De Dennis Hickey's stride. Chance may be wasted, but it still gives Ireland a good attacking line of some 10 metres inside the Welsh 22. Wales making the change. Dwayne Peel, the Clinetley scrum half, is on for Gareth Cooper, so they've made the change at nine. They need to make a serious change on the scoreboard, though. Humphreys doing the hoovering. Well taken by Matthew Watkins, that wasn't an easy take, a bouncing ball. Thomas. Over the head of Marcus Horan, and I wonder if he got a touch on that. The touch judge will tell us. No, he didn't. It will be an Irish throw in, but he couldn't have been far away. That well, wasn't far away, but he'll wonder what the hell am I doing here. <laughs> it's a very uncommon position to find a, a prop on the pitch in these days, but all in all, this is something this is where Wales nearly really need to need to start something from here on in as the stats really favour Ireland quite significantly in terms of territory, shading it just about in possession. Shane Byrne throws in and loses out to Gareth Llewellyn. Opportunity for Wales. Dwayne Peel, the replacement, into Taylor. Tries to set them up again. See Peel digging away. This is Gareth Thomas, the bridge end winger. Taken on again by Daveth Jones. He's really worked hard to protect his reputation in the last couple of games. Jarvis on the burst. Lovely take by Reese Williams. Martin Williams for the line and scores. Invention and guts from Wales. And some hope to boot. Reese Williams with the thrust. Martin Williams with the score. Well, that's what they needed. Three times it looked like that movement was going to break down, but they managed to get the ball away in the tackle every time. Started by Charvis, who takes that short ball, has just dragged down. That's wonderful hands. Again, it looks like it's going to break down, but again, it's kept alive by Nathan Davis. And Martin Williams just managed to stretch. It wasn't a double move, but the ball hadn't touched the ground. That's where Wales are right back in it again, but that's what they need to do. They need to keep this ball in hand, run at this Irish defence, because this Irish defence is not on its game today. It's not as sharp as it should be. And that 
That's an important line-out steal for Ireland. Quinlan. Six metres short. Gleeson. Scorer of the two tries either side of half-time. Stringer. Humphreys did well to take that back inside. Neatly to Kevin Maggs. Stringer again. The burst was from the man. Notching up his 50th O'Kelly. He doesn't score. But maybe Ireland have. No, no, no. No, no, no. What's well, Steve Landers' decision? He's going across to the touch he gets judge. It down, but it's also held up prior to that. You're going to have to go up to yeah. the ground at first. Paddy O'Brien from New Zealand no, offered no. the advice, and the advice was we need to go to the video replay referee again, Joel Juche, and he will tell us if Brian O'Driscoll Joel, has scored. Can you hear me? I want to see the grounding of the ball. Can you see if Green grounded the ball first, please? Well, it's the kind of decision on which grand slams might be based. I'm not sure whether we're going to see it from this position. Martin Williams is doing his best to grub underneath O'Driscoll. The video ref said yes to Wales in the first half and no to Ireland in the second. Quickly to Yeston Harris, this is Matthew Watkins. Driven back though, and Ireland have done well to wrestle back possession. This is Justin Bishop. Tackled by the retreating Nevin Davis. Malcolm O'Kelly on the burst. Stringer to Hickey. Held up by David Jones. Wales though caught offside. And these could be three very valuable points for Ireland. 16, offside. Just a little test for Humphreys. The wrong side for the right-footed kicker. Under a little bit of pressure. But ice cold nerves. And another three points. And with 15 minutes to go, a quarter of an hour to go, Ireland have gone more than a score ahead again. It's Wales 14, Ireland 22. Timing all important. Robert Sadoli up early, held the position, secured possession. But Wales are still there. Break from Jones. Peel, maybe a high tackle on Yestin Harris. This is Mevin Davis into the Irish 22. Again, the break from Yestin Harris. Jones, five metres short. They've got loads of men over. They must score. Thomas for the line. His 65th cap. And a 29th try. And Wales will not lie down. Now you sense that if they could just get field position, as John Humphries was saying, that the tries could come. Again, just by simply running at this Irish defence. And as we said again, a, a porous Irish defence going by their normal standards. Getting beyond the game line with ease are Wales. The ball is kept alive. Gareth Thomas has options outside him, but they've created many, many overlap situations, but they took that one, they made it count there. Big kick for Stephen Jones. This to trim it to just a point. It has been trimmed to just a point. Goodness me, a little over ten minutes to go. And Ireland's Grand Slam bid is hanging by a thread. Wales 21, Ireland 22. Four minutes of added time. It will drag by like a horse loaded down by concrete if you're Irish and whiz by if you're Welsh. Four minutes to go. 
And just Donnay's having problems keeping that shoulder up against the weight of Yeston Thomas, who's really pulling him down and, and driving in and across him, which is forcing John Hayes down and into the dirt. And that's why Ireland are being penalised in these scrums. They're really starting to turn the screw on Ireland now, Wales. Stephen Jones finds that touch. A big, big line-out. Well, it wasn't clean, but it was rescued by Martin Williams, and this is a dangerous area. They can't concede penalties. Maybe a drop goal from Jones for glory! It's there! Has Stephen Jones punctured Ireland's Grand Slam hopes? Two minutes into added time, two minutes to go, and Wayne for the first time are ahead. Well, he's taken the chance. We've got to take those rare opportunities when they're presented. He's missed the penalty. But a much better struck ball from the drop goal. That's what, that's what wins and loses games. He couldn't afford to wait again. When it presented itself, he had to take it, and he made it count. Back come Ireland. O'Gara with one of his own. It's there! Would you believe it? Astonishing! Within 30 seconds of Wales seemingly having snatched the Grand Slam, Ireland and O'Gara snatch it right back. Well, how quick this game is turning. Well, what an inspired substitution this might prove to have been from Eddie O'Sullivan if nothing changes from here on in. There's the man of the match, who might have been the man of the century if that drop goal hadn't been rubbed out by Ronan O'Gara 30 seconds later. But Wales have the penalty. They will have one more opportunity from this line-out to try and engineer a position to break Irish hearts. But the time clock is almost ticking on empty. The well match you bite your nails, because as if we've been waiting for this from the, from the off, it's all goal go now. Jones to Harris, Harris breaking through, again Jones positioning himself for the drop goal, not on that occasion, Ireland were aware of what he was trying to do and did very well to cut down the time. Here's Jones again, Rhys Williams, Gareth Thomas, Here's big Martin Madden driving on his first taste of the Six Nations. What an experience. Jones again, I think, half thinking about the drop goal. Into the Irish 22. Williams. He was fine. Justin Bishop. Now, what's the referee saying here? He's playing the advantage. The ball was not forward. Wales will have the scrum, whatever, maybe they won't need it. Look out for Stephen Jones. He's positioning himself on the 22 for the drop goal, which charged out by Dennis Hickey. It's as important as a try. Hickey stopping the drop goal that might have ended the dream of the slam. And still we play on. Stringer into touch, and it is time to start breathing again. Has there been a more dramatic end to a Six Nations match in a very, very long time? What a conclusion.